everyone. Thanks for joining Emily from Ripples. And today I'm here with Bob Peters in North Carolina. That's Charlotte. How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing great. It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me again for Mixology Monday. I'm excited. And because of the time difference, uh, and it's only 12 o'clock here, I get to start drinking super early today. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, reminds me of the good old days. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, we're actually doing something super fun, and I loved your idea on this twist. Um, we're taking original classic cocktails, and we're making them a little extra special. So what inspired you to take these originals and, I don't know, improve them? So I wanted to do uh, something um, today for our uh, our class that was very approachable for everybody, you know, and some things that didn't require lots and lots of uh, sort of homemade syrups and things like that. So my thought was to do some things that people are familiar with and just twist them just a little bit and, and make them extra special in our ripples kind of way, you know, and, and do some fun things uh, like that. So not only that, but uh, coming up, let's see, next, I think it's this weekend, right? I think it's this weekend. It's the uh, Kentucky Derby here in the States. And so we have this huge horse race uh, and, ever, and it's a huge drinking, um, it's a huge drinking event with mint juleps. And so uh, I thought, we could do a mint julep, and then I was like, wait a minute, everybody already knows how to do a mint julep. We, we don't have to show people that. Let's do a derby. So a derby is another classic cocktail that's very, very popular but less well-known during the Kentucky Derby. And so that's sort of where we got our start. Amazing. So um, that's pretty exciting. And I've actually got all the ingredients we hear, and I love the twist that we th through on this one so we actually had a little bit of problem sourcing limes here in israel and you told me you know what it's okay you got to work with what ingredients are fresh and I, I and you're right i absolutely love that you suggested to them some grapefruits so i found yep. pink grapefruits and squeezed them this morning for us and yep. they are looking divine so why don't we get started with our first cocktail of the evening or okay well, so, <laughs> since we started talking about uh the derby let's go ahead and make the derby first this is uh this is super delicious so you can take uh, a coupe glass or a nick and nora this isn't a necessarily a massive cocktail so you don't need a you don't need a massive uh a massive bowl but uh let's grab our shakers right and then if you're going to use, um, so the, this is the great thing about the ripples maker is that you can use a couple of different things to make foam, right? Of course, like you guys, uh, the, the, um, coffee drinks, of course you can do that. But since we're using alcohol, lots of people love to use, uh, egg whites, right? Uh, so yep. egg whites are fantastic. However, some people who are vegetarians or vegans, uh, they, um, they don't necessarily want to do that. So I wanted to show the versatility of this. And so this is um, aquafaba or chickpea water. Exactly. And I love working with this stuff. I think it's fantastic. Uh, and it's super easy. It's easy to store. It's easy to work with. For any classic cocktail recipe that you see or any recipe that you would use uh, an egg white for, instead you just use an ounce of chickpea water or, or aquafaba. So let's go ahead and put that in there first. Let's do our ounce. Or how many uh, how many mLs is that over there? Uh, one ounce. That's thirty mLs. There we go. There we go. I love our translation, right? Our math. <laughs> yeah. <translations. laughs> exactly. Everyone okay. can enjoy. Uh, and then let's use some bourbon. Uh, so let's do an an ounce and a half of bourbon, or what? What would that be? Ninety. Uh, is that ninety? Uh, it's forty-four. 44. My math is terrible. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> little, little, little leaders, I mean. There what were we thinking? <laughs> I know. You guys always, Europe always does the smart, uh, intelligent things. And um, and I don't have any excuses for the United <laughs> States anymore. I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, so let's, we've, we've got an, uh, an ounce and a half of our bourbon, an ounce of our aquafaba in there. Let's do three quarters of an ounce of our fresh lime juice. And three quarters of an ounce is uh, 22, that's half. All right. 
Uh, we're down the home stretch. We got two more ingredients left. Uh, so let's do a little bit of Grand Marnier or like an orange liqueur. Uh, so and we're just going to do a half ounce of that. I'm using my Cointreau. It is not available in this country. Cointreau is uh, delicious, and I love Cointreau. It's got a yeah. slightly different taste to it, but not a, not a giant difference. So Cointreau is, is a fantastic alternative. And then last but not least, we're going to use a little bit of our sweet vermouth, and we're going to do the same amount that we did with the Cointreau or the Grand Marnier. We're going to do a half ounce. Well, that's metric lovers. And that's it. That's it. I'm going to give this up uh, and then we'll add some ice, right? There we go. And then I'm going to get in some ice. And we'll give it a nice hard wet shake here in a second. There we go. All right, now get after it. I want to. I want to see. You, I want to see you like really working out after this thing. Right here, you ready? There we go. Keep going. Keep going. Four more. Three more. Oh. Got a cramp. Oh, I got a cramp. <laughs> All right. Crazy oh, that looks great. Oh. I'm going to, uh, you can double strain it or not. Sometimes uh, double straining makes my foam, but makes the bubbles work a little bit better for me. I love my double strainer. Look at that. There, that is pretty, pretty. Okay, now, look at that. Yours looks beautiful. All right, wow, it looks great too. That foam is fantastic. Okay. I'm excited for this. <laughs> so tell me about what, uh, I, my Ripples machine is behind the camera, so I'm gonna wander over there, but I want you to tell me about what you're gonna put on yours. Well, for the Derby, I was thinking, you know, what's fabulous for the Derby? What do people always do at the Derby? All, with all the ladies, they come dressed in this amazing, fantastical hat. And in the UK, we call them fascinators sometimes, but these go above and beyond the normal fascinator. They're huge. They're frolicky and beautiful. So I've got a very fancy lady with a hat to print on top of my um, Derby Sour. So... I'm actually also using our black carrot extract, which is a all natural extract made from black carrots. And it comes out this beautiful, vibrant, pinky color, pinky red actually. So there we go. So the uh, one thing to, to mention as mine is printing over here is that this original Derby recipe uh, doesn't call for an egg white or any aquafaba. We just sort of added that uh, in order to be able to to have fun and play with this with our Ripples machine. But I think this is going to be um, pretty dang perfect for this cocktail. I think I'm ready over here. Let's see what we got. And I'm actually missing my double strainer. Maybe we can find the double strainer. Oh, uh, mine turned out so beautifully. I've got one of um, one of my favorite images. I'm going to see if you guys can see this. Show me, show me. Uh, let's see, I'm going to tip my camera forward. There tip. we go. Love that one. This is my favorite. Yeah, it's part of the pop art collection. It did yeah. so well. The pop it's art, uh, I, I love this. The, the look on her face is the look when her hat blows away in the derby. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. And I've got even enough for her tasting. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Now we get it. Can we try it? Is it time? Yes, please. 
Cheers. Cheers. Uh, that is quite fantastic. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, how many? Cake. I could drink probably 34 of those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I like the specificity of it. 34. Seems like a good number. Know, 34. 34. Lucky number, number 34. <laughs> oh, that is tasty. Tasty. Yum. And super easy. Like, we have all these ingredients in our house almost always, and you can just whip it up. No problem. I know it was uh, none of that. Um, none of those things are too crazy unusual, especially if you're going to use egg whites instead of the aquafaba. Again, like really easy, and, and and typical stuff that you find laying around your bar, whether you're at your house or uh, if you're behind a behind a restaurant bar somewhere. Absolutely, and something fun I learned about the aquafaba is they're starting to make a dried version of aquafaba water, so you no longer need a can of chickpeas to make aquafaba water anymore. You just uh, put a little bit of powder, mix it with some water, and you're set for the night. And then you have a dry bag of it. So that's something I'm looking to purchase in the future, in the near future. And uh, just makes very sense. Very cool. Very, very cool. And then you always have egg whites. You know what I mean? You always yeah. have foam. You're ready to rock. Exactly. No eggs, oh. no beans. You're set. All right. That is fantastic. <laughs> definitely delicious i'm gonna have a fun lunch after this this is gonna be like <laughs> yeah. who's going to lunch lunch is on me let's do it <laughs> absolutely um oh. well what do you think maybe we should maybe start on another one i think that sounds about right um mm -hmm the sour word so i really love this one okay it's based off an old 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 cocktail and i'm so excited to taste this once i saw the recipe i was like this seems like a more balanced version because normally you put one part one part one part one part everything but this one seems a little bit toned down and um in the theme of making things flexible, I've decided to put tequila in mine instead of the regular gin. Ooh. Yes, I'm a well done. Big tequila fan, and uh, less on the gin. Gin, you know, there's a time and a place for everything, but uh, I wanted to put a little twist on this one, so we're calling it the the sour word by Bob, and uh, mine will be the spicy sour word. <laughs> What do you, oh, for the, yeah, the tequila, that is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I love that you did that. And, and I want to make sure to touch on everybody that's, that's watching at home is that that's just part of the fun part of it. You know, it's like, if you don't have gin at home, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can still make this recipe. Just substitute one of your other favorites in there for it. Now, sometimes it doesn't always work. Like if you had like a chocolate liqueur, I'm not sure that that would work really well in here. However, uh, tequila is a fantastic replacement and lots of classic cocktails. Same thing with mezcal. Uh, so anytime you see gin uh, or bourbon or um, rum, any of those things, you can swap it out. Uh, and sometimes, depending on how big a fan you are, like you are, Emily, of tequila, you might like it better than the original classic. So I want to encourage everybody to experiment, right? And not to feel like yeah. you're trapped and can't make something just because you don't have one of the ingredients. Like you were saying earlier, limes might uh, sometimes be a little bit scarce. Try it with grapefruit juice, you know, or lemon juice, whatever. And, you know, worse comes to worse. Uh, if you hate it, just drink it uh, and then start all over. I think, that, <laughs> you know, things could be worse, right? Indeed, indeed they can. So... All right, well, why don't you take the lead with this one? What are we doing, Miss Emily? All right. So, again, we're using our aquafaba, our substitute for egg whites. It's vegan and uh, vegetarian friendly, and that is uh, 30 mLs. And for Bob over there, that's uh, <laughs> one, one ounce. One ounce. And I normally use about one ounce, 30 ml of the aquafaba. And most of the foamy cocktails I'm making, I find that it's just the perfect level. It balances out. You don't uh, feel it a lot. I get that question a lot. 
You're using chickpea water? That's what it is? Doesn't it change the flavor of the cocktail? Bob, can you answer that question? I um, I think that it kind of makes it a little bit better because they, um, I think they put like a, like a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of salt uh, when they're packing the garbanzo beans or the chickpeas, whatever you want to call it. So it has a, like the tiniest flavor, but I think that it's fantastic. I think it adds a depth to the cocktail that you're not going to get uh, with an egg white because the egg whites, you know, don't have any salt in them. So I love a little touch of salinity in my cocktail. So uh, I think it makes it better. That's I agree with that. Salt is a great flavor enhancer. So we're also putting 60 mLs. I'm using um, Jose Cuervo and uh, that's 60 mLs of uh, yummy tequila. So that's I'm two using ounces. two ounces of one of my favorite gins. And again, we have that lime that doesn't exist. So I'm using lemon instead on this cocktail. And that is 22 mLs. 4.75 ounces. Exactly. Now, this is a classic as well. We're busting out this guy. The Luxardo Marchino Liqueur. Look, across the world, we have the same bottle. This stuff's pretty popular. That. You can find it just about everywhere in the world. If you can find it here, you can find it where you are. I'm sure <laughs> certain of it. And a very little bit of this one. This is 7 mLs. Yeah, or a quarter ounce of this bad boy. And I wanted to taste this one here. So, yeah. It's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yep. No, no denying that. And so after that, a very awesome ingredient. I've always loved chartreuse. And I did a little bit of digging around about chartreuse today. And I'm so excited. So excited to learn about this in ingredient a little bit better. It comes from France, like a monastery, and there's been a recipe for 400 years. And there's 130 different herbs, and nobody knows what the recipe is, but um, it's pretty magical stuff. Well, what it's can like, you tell uh, me about chartreuse? Have, have you ever um, you ever seen um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka? Right. Yes. You remember? You remember they had the. Um, what was it? One of those candies always changed and it never was like the everlasting gobstopper, right? Yeah. This is this green chartreuse is like the everlasting gobstopper of flavor. If you try <laughs> this just by itself, like the depth of flavor is so crazy. Like it goes and goes and goes. So like 10 seconds after you try it just by itself, you'll have a different taste in your mouth than when you push, first touched it to your palate. Like it, it's uh, it's pretty dang amazing. Like. Uh, it's, it is both strong in flavor and in proof. So typically, yes. uh, typically, you know, you don't, you're not going to drink a ton of this by itself unless you're really getting after it. Uh, but <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it's a, it's 110 proof. Uh, yes, so, that's right. I mean, this is, this has got some giddy up right in there. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's got a beautiful peppery, almost minty kind of herbal flavor. So we're actually using one ounce of this. That stuff is that stuff is magic. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually all natural green. That and there's no uh, food coloring. Little known, little known fact: uh, the color that people talk about, green chartreuse, comes from the liquor. That's how long the liquor's been around. It's amazing. It's great. All right. Let me find a smaller cup because this is a stronger drink. So we'll replace this giant coop with a little guy. A pretty, pretty. Yeah. So we're dry shaking first. Bob's already ahead of the game like usual. <laughs> it's a nice dry shake. All right. You ready for some ice? Add the ice. Mm. Now we got to give it hell. <laughs> give it hell. That's about, I'm, I'm not going to say shake it ever again. I'm going to say no, give it hell. <laughs> Oh, 
They talk about tennis elbow, but what about bartender elbow? <laughs> I've had it. I've had it. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous, but it's true. No, seriously. I felt my elbow just there. Oh, wow. That looks good. All right. Color. Hey, pretty. Let's move everybody out of the way. All right, that is turning out nicely. I love the color, and it's like a sherbet color. Love yeah. That. I got enough for one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pick out my uh, my image on my ripples maker over here. Perfect. Hey. So. What are you choosing, or maybe I can wait till you print and then you can tell me why you chose what you did. No, I'm definitely excited for this cocktail. I'm always wanting to learn how to mix chartreuse into other things instead of just um, drinking it plain on the rocks, because drinking it plain on the rocks is, of course, amazing and classic, but uh, to mix chartreuse. With other complement cocktails, it's great. That is turned out so pretty. Can't wait. I've got to get my machine closer to the camera. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm about to make a mess. And then <laughs> in the next upgrade. All right. So mine's all fancied up. Got hey, tired. so Emily, I've been meaning to ask you uh, while I'm printing up my uh, my image over here. Are you going to uh, the um, restaurant uh, convention, the National Restaurant Convention and Bar Show in Las Vegas? Right. So, you know what? I've been waiting to hear back more information about this. But it looks like I might be actually going to another country and maybe even taking an airplane there and maybe seeing you in Vegas. Oh, yay! Vegas, baby! <laughs> and we're so excited to be there. It just, it, it, especially with all this COVID going around, it doesn't feel like traveling is going to happen, but people are making plans. Um, the quarantines are changing for those who are vaccinated. No, it's a really exciting time, and uh, things are starting to really look up, and that's so exciting to hear. And I'm happy for our customers that are able to open their stores back up. We've heard a lot of good news lately, so. Yeah, I'm what excited. did you I, uh, Mine says, uh, mine has this beautiful font on it, and it says, Mondays are optional. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was true. Well, that's it's why we good. have Mixed Drink Monday, don't we? <laughs> that's it, right. So my print is actually reminded me of the hills of France. And so after reading oh. all about chartreuse, I was like, I have to print this one on top of the chartreuse cocktail. So that's what we ended up printing today. I love it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, Bob. Oh, uh, that is fantastic. It's so great. It smells different than it tastes, you know? Smells yeah, peppery the, and like, but well, then when you taste it, it's smooth and a little bit sour. Yeah, and a little minty. Uh, like there's so much going on with that chartreuse. Yeah. Like there's notes of licorice in there. There's definitely some pepper, some mint, all kinds of herbs. I mean, there's 137 herbs in there. I mean, whatever you taste, I'm sure it's probably in there. So that is that's one of my favorite things to play with. And uh, this is one of my um, new favorite cocktails. Like a sour word. I think that's a I think that one plays yeah no this is one for the books that's for sure oh yeah that's good uh, and i think everyone probably tasted differently too like i think taste is kind of like how people see colors so it, there's a spectrum of what you can taste more than other people and probably some people taste pepper and other people taste licorice and this guy tastes mint over here you know so it's a very very unique it's very cocktail. subjective right mm -hmm. All right, that's delicious. So yeah, nightclub and bars, that's pretty crazy. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, wait, uh, I, 
I think that we might be close to you. I'm actually going to be working for the nightclub and bar convention, and uh, I will be at the big live bar sports uh, sports section. So okay. we should be having lots and lots of cocktails, and I'm sure I'm going to be fun printing lots of cocktails with Ripple's images. So I'm excited about the about that event for sure. When, no, when, when is, is that the end of June, right? Yep. Yeah. As far as I remember. Absolutely. Oh, we'll rinse this out of the tip. Kind of nice being in the kitchen mine. here. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm not getting rid of that one. That one's too good. We'll keep that mm -hmm. around. It's fantastic. It is. Here, I think the on-site crew deserves some, too. <laughs> you can Back help them my out boss. a little bit, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, great. Well, where are we where how are we doing time-wise? We're doing okay. Yeah, exactly. We're chilling. We're hanging out. Um, the next recipe, we can start talking about it because it's interesting. We worked with ISI canisters before in the past and there's this whole world of isi canister foams and uh it really it's marvelous what you can do with these and the, the amount of ingredients you can put in them is infinite and what you can do with it is magical for cocktails so why don't you tell us a little bit about isi foams and teach me a little bit more about it because we had a conversation before we got here and I told you I was a little bit uncomfortable using my eyes for anything. So, so this is uh, way simpler. Like this looks intimidating, right? And you see people making foams and uh, creams and things. It's super easy, actually. There's some kind of basic recipes that you can follow, and then you can get creative on your own. Now, I think it's really interesting to make a liqueur into a foam. So then, like the foam that you sort of uh, that, you, that you put on top of a cocktail, all of a sudden now it has booze in it, which I think is fascinating because you're sort of floating a cocktail on top of your cocktail that makes the cocktail taste better, which I, I love <laughs> yeah. that. I, I absolutely love it. So um, I played with thumbs um, for quite some, some years now, and one of my favorites is, uh, is a St. Germain foam. Uh, it, I think it's very, very beautiful. St. Germain is an elderflower liqueur. Uh, and it, it can be a very beautiful, delicate flavor so long as you use it sparingly. And the interesting thing is when you mix it, uh, when you make a foam out of it with egg whites or aquafaba, right? Uh, because that's yeah. that's how it, how the foams work. Just like we were getting earlier with the the shake. Uh, can you still hear me? I can still hear you. I think I think we lost the video. Let's see what happened. Yeah. Uh, how's that? My internet might nope, pop you're back. Out. Hey, here we go. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, the the foam is what what we're after, right? But we can do that, and we can actually put the put the liqueur in it. So the Saint Germain is really beautiful. The foam is nice and airy, uh, and so you don't have to put a ton of liqueur in there in order to make this. And you can make half batches, but uh, the I've made a full batch uh, typically because I'm going to go through it. I'm going to. I'm going to drink it or serve it to my wife or my friends or whoever comes over here to the garage bar to, uh, <laughs> to, have, a, to have a quick one. Um, but typically what I've found is that we are doing, um, we're doing four egg whites and then six ounces of whatever liqueur you choose to do. Now, the stronger the liqueur, right, liqueurs are typically 60, 70 proof, somewhere around there, maybe a little bit lower, the, sh the higher in proof you get the less firm that the foam is going to be. So green chartreuse foam will be, would be a little bit more difficult and you might have to play around with it a little bit more, like maybe add a little bit less Saint, a uh, little bit less green chartreuse or maybe some more egg whites. Um, however, I love uh, St. Germain and something that I've done recently was I made a creme de violette foam. Uh, and that, right. sort of leads us, that sort of leads us into where we're going to be here in a second. But, uh, so, uh, back to my foam recipe, I'll do four egg whites or four ounces of your aquafaba, 
six ounces of your chosen liqueur that's not too high in proof, and then four ounces of lemon juice, and then I will equal the same amount of liqueur as I will with a simple syrup. And so that's sort of the, uh, and my simple syrup is a little bit differently. It's not super sugary. So I typically do two parts water and one part sugar, okay? So okay. I know that all sounds complicated, but it's really not, you know. <laughs> uh, so um, basically, um, if you, uh, have you made- um, So I actually did not prepare my ISI. I actually wanted to show that, hey, you don't have to use the ISI, okay. but it's there for you to use if you do need it. I actually, the next drink, let me introduce the next drink, it's called Aviation. Yeah. And aviation is a classic, classic old school cocktail as well. And it's normally very purple. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. So I took the time and I infused gin with a bit of butterfly pea flower to get that violet color. I really had a hard time finding creme de violet here in Israel. So I was actually told by a few of my bartender and friends, if you're not ordering it online at least a month in advance, you're not going to be able to find this ingredient. So to get that color, I use butterfly pea flower, which has the most beautifully like purpley blue color. I know it looks kind of strange in my science cup, but I borrowed it from the chemist here on the floor. <laughs> so this has been infusing, I think, for about six, seven hours already today. And I'm excited to use this and see what happens when I put a little bit of lemon juice with this, because once you add butterfly pea flower to lemon it acts as a ph indicator so it's gonna make one heck of a beautiful cocktail like the aviation should be i'm actually missing one have, ingredient i'm just gonna run off screen for a second have a, have a, mm. a little bit of sugar water okay that <laughs> a little bit of sugar water exactly uh, okay. so um Basically, uh, I did, um, I made my canister up already. Uh, so you okay. want to, if you want to chill, if you want to chill that a little bit after you put everything together, again, what I did was uh, four ounces of the aquafaba. I did six ounces of my um, creme de violet, which is a violet flavored liqueur. So very floral. Uh, so if you are using St. Germain as a as a substitute, then that that'll that'll be that'll work beautifully, and then four ounces of lemon juice and six ounces of simple syrup. I put everything in here. Uh, I took a cartridge and I charged this twice. Okay, so they have these little cartridges yeah. uh, that basically you just put on on there, and then you can hear it crack and you hear it shh, like fill up, charge your canister. I used two of those, and then I put it into the refrigerator for a little while just to help the foam set up like when you do it when you make a fresh foam like it, it works very very well although it, it may be a little loose so if you put it in the refrigerator for like 30 minutes or so then it'll firm back up and you'll have uh, a really really beautiful foam uh right there but let's uh let's make this cocktail let's see what we get how about that all right sounds good so if you're making this all together, so mine is going to be just a little bit differently since I am, uh, since I'm going to add my foam at the very end. So uh, you guys at home, if you're following along, this you would start off with your single egg white or your one ounce of aquafaba, and then uh, this is a, a gin cocktail. Um, and if you choose not to use gin, again, like earlier, Emily, I love what you did when you used tequila for the um, the last word take. The sour word that is great. That works fantastic for this cocktail as well. Again, mezcal works great. Uh, I think that that um, that would work. And then vodka to me, I love vodka uh, in certain occasions, but it doesn't bring a lot to the table because vodka is not supposed to taste like anything. So um, yeah. if, you, if you're in a pinch, vodka will work always, right? Always. Yeah. Whether it's br brushing your teeth or making an aviation. <laughs> but, cleaning uh, the table. <laughs> cleaning the table, whatever it is. But um, <laughs> I would go ahead and put in your, put in after you have your either egg white or your aquafaba, I would go ahead and put in your base spirit now. Two ounces or how many mLs is that, Miss Emily? So that's 60 mLs of the gin, which I infused with the butterfly pea flower to get that amazing color that is normally accompanied with the aviation cocktail. Super cool. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to do uh, a half ounce 
of lemon juice. Freshly squeezed. It's the best. Freshly squeezed. Listen, you got you got to do. Don't get me started. You know, I'll go off for about ten minutes about freshly squeezed juice. You did. <laughs> anybody at home following us? Just take a couple extra minutes. Grab a couple of pieces of fresh fruit. Squeeze them, and then it's over. And all of a sudden, your cocktail game just for no good reason, right? All of a sudden, starts going better. I know. The grapefruit juices, that's it. That's This my was jam. one grapefruit, okay? Like, one grapefruit gave me that much juice. Like, we yep. use that much in our cocktail. So, really, that's you can use half a grapefruit and make enough cocktails for a lot of your friends. So, that's it's it. really quite easy. So, we added uh, that, that lemon. Yep. All right, next, next up. Let's put a, a little Luxardo maraschino liqueur. We're going to go back. We actually have hit some of my favorite cocktails because of this Luxardo. This stuff is, uh, it's by itself, it's slightly medicinal, but in a good way. So it has a lot of depth of flavor. It is very sweet uh, and very viscous. So it adds, uh, it adds a really interesting touch to cocktails when you do it, but you use it sparingly. So I'm just going to do a quarter ounce of our Luxardo. That's seven mLs for us metrics. Seven, seven mLs. You bet. Uh, and then, so you guys, uh, you are going to um, add. Let's see. I think that's it. You've got you. It's time for you to put some Saint Germain in there. A little bit of simple syrup. So yep, I can end up with some simple. Um, I think it's because you're do you're using your um, your Saint Germain. Try it first without uh, oh, the great. simple Let's syrup. Give it yeah, uh, give it a shake or a stir. We'll give I've it a taste. I've got to get a little bit of simple syrup out of my little tiny refrigerator over here. I think seven might do it well. Okay. Got a and little bit of the power. So that is a great uh, that is a great lesson for folks that are following along at home. Is that you know you could try something halfway through or when you think you're finished with it, and if it's not sweet enough, add a little simple syrup. You know, but you can. Um, you can always add more, but you can't take it out once you put it in there. So that well, that's means the simply, thing. I know it's, it's actually a very simple theory. When you're working with fruits and vegetables, fruits have different levels of sugars. The lemons aren't always going to have the same amount of sugar, though. The grapefruit is going to be more sour in the beginning of the season as opposed to the end of the season. So a little bit of simple syrup can go a long way. That's all we're trying to say. So I've actually okay. got all my ingredients in there, so I'm going to give it a dry shake. Give yours a dry shake, and I'm going to add foam here in a second, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding some ice. You tell me when you're ready for your wet shake. You bet. It's such a pretty color. I cannot wait. To <laughs> I know this is this is a beautiful cocktail and one of my favorite all times, for sure. And aviation is pretty uh, pretty incredible. And it's so simple, really. The basic ingredients are everything we have at home. The liqueur Luxardo. You can get Luxardo everywhere. I'm pretty sure on this planet. Maybe if you're in Antarctica, you might have some trouble. But other than that. You'll be good. Um, I am starting my wet shake with my ice cube. You ready? Okay, let's yeah. have at it. Give it hell. Kayla. Oh, that elbow. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's, let's give it a little double am... strain. So excited. <laughs> this cocktail is out of this world. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to fill mine up. Not quite all the way. I've got just a little tiny bit left over, but that's okay with me because I still have to fit my foam in here. Let me get rid of this guy. Oh, look how pretty yours is. So beautiful. Really? This is the prettiest purple cocktail I think I've ever made. Thank you, Bob. This is okay, awesome. Okay, so you ready? I'm, I'm going to see if you guys can see this one. So mine just looks like yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of white. It's kind of 
uh, sort of opaque with that lemon juice and the gin in there. So now I'm going to add my um, I'm going to add my creme uh, creme de violet foam on top. So this is going to have like a very light kind of a lavender sort of look to it. Look at that. So pretty. Reminds me of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. So this color, uh, and I wish you guys could see this. This is the color is pretty amazing. Oh, it's so pretty. The the green on the purple is just perfect. Yeah, that is really great. And then um, as this sort of sits for a minute, the uh, the creme de violet is going to sort of start to streak into the cocktail and turn it that little light lavender color. Mm, go as it print pours right down. Now. Oh, look at yours. That looks fantastic. So, because I used the butterfly pea flower, I printed a butterfly. Hey, I love it. Isn't that so pretty? Beautiful. Oh, uh, what a color. Holy moly. That, that's an Instagram post right there. <laughs> that's it. That's all right. Let me see what I got. There we go. Print mine up real quick. So it's so easy to upload your own custom content using the Ripples Cloud. And if you have a Ripple Maker in your business, you should definitely take advantage of it. allows you to upload whatever content you need for different events or holidays that are happening around you. Things that maybe will custom fit your beverages that you're serving. So use the Ripples Cloud. If you don't have a user, contact us at support. And we'll hook you up in a matter of minutes. It's really quite easy. Ah, uh, winner. Mine says winner. Mine, mine says winner best drink award. <laughs> Absolutely. No, these are some top notch cocktails. And there's a reason why these drinks have been around for so, so long. They really are classic. I have to taste it. I have to taste it yet. That is so good. Don't tell anyone, but I don't like gin. Oh, is that true? I know. It's like a swear word in this day and age, right? <laughs> I know. I just clutched my pearls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That is wow. But you know what? That's delicious. Really, it's so really balanced. Good. I'm surprised there's gin in there. As did, a you use, gin, did, uh, did you use gin or did you use tequila? I used gin on this one. I infused the butterfly pea flowers in gin. I was like, I can't. That's right. That's right. Them. Use use gin in one of them because gin has such a unique taste. It really there's nothing comparable to gin. It's uh, earthy and piney and spicy in all sorts of weird ways that gin is very special. So really, really delicious. Man, that turned out well. No, that that that. That's super delicious. If you're at home and just joining us now, you've missed out some amazing cocktails. So we'll hopefully be sharing this on YouTube. And of course, the recipes will be up on our website. So you can get these recipes. You do not want to miss out these cocktails. These are classics, but elevated by a refined taste buds of Bob. So thank you. <laughs> I um I did like I, I have an interesting taste. So I do play with some classic recipes, and I know. A lot of people at home will be like, that is blasphemy. You can't change a classic cocktail. But I would like to encourage everybody to play and, and, and like make things your own and enjoy it the way that you want to enjoy it. So if you barely like bourbon in your Manhattan and you want mostly sweet vermouth, have at it. You know, However you enjoy it most, I think, is how you ought to enjoy it most. <laughs> Absolutely. If it's not suited to your taste, to your creativity, cocktails, it's like blending different ingredients from different areas to make something beautiful that works together and it requires creativity. It's all about changing what's already existing and being inspired by what you've already tasted. So that's right. Fix it. Don't be afraid. Fix it. Make it make yeah. it your own. Like there's again, like I said earlier, the worst comes, you know, worst things worse. Uh, is that you know you just drink a cocktail that um, that you just made you know that's the, that's the <laughs> the worst of it. <laughs> Absolutely. No, this one is really one for the books. Cheers, Bob. Cheers. Thank you for having me today. 
it's been a pleasure like always we should do this more wow. often i'm i'm into it especially on mondays <laughs> perfect mondays is our mixed drink monday post <laughs> and uh, it definitely works for timing so i'd like to thank everyone for joining us and sticking around and if you just joined us now find our posts later on youtube about our beautiful cocktail session here with bob for summer cocktails something that's a little fresher a little bit lighter for the upcoming summer season where hopefully we'll all be allowed outside again so <laughs> and for the derby right and if you're stuck at home to watch the derby then you've got a little bit of you got some cocktails that you can make uh with your your Super egg wipes or your aquafaba and make sure to put your your ripples images on top for sure <laughs> yeah exactly oh that's so great so thank you bob and uh that's a wrap happy mixed drink monday everybody thanks thanks for having me Bye, Bob. It's a pleasure.